pleasant day to all of us. As a public service of the program Kakampi Mo Ang Batas, we are replaying here the live lecture of Attorney Maria Luisa Dominic Domingo Mauricio at the University of San Agustin, Iloilo City, and at the Philippine Center for Arbitration, Western Visayas Region, in a seminar entitled Decoding Disputes. Here is the full lecture of Attorney Maria Luisa Dominique Domingo Mauricio of the OSG, Office of the Sister General and of the Philippine Arbitration Center in Western Visayas. Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, bring you this lecture and let's see how it's going to be. So good evening, everyone. It's now 8.30, and uh, I would like to welcome everyone to Decoding Disputes, a lecture on domestic and international arbitration. So before we start our talk, I would like to go over some house rules just to ensure uh, the, the smooth flow of our uh, program for this evening. And before that, uh, for the information of everyone, we are now live on Facebook, and this is shared through the University of San Agustin Facebook page and as Sigma Alpha Facebook page. So we will now go through Listen attentively and please stay throughout the entire program. And for inquiries and clarifications, these will be entertained after the talk or if our speaker calls for it. So we will be having a question and answer uh, segment later on. So should you have any questions, uh, please use the chat box. So uh, for the moderator to note it uh, again later after our uh, speakers time the talk. And for our last rule, uh, everybody, uh, I would like to invite you all to watch out for our next speaker. So for month long series of talks. So for this week, we have, aside from our speaker for tonight, we have another speaker tomorrow. Uh, joining us will be Mr. Vikas Mahendra, the co-founder of the Center for Online Resolution of Disputes. And for next week, uh, we will be joined by our two uh, speakers in the persons of Dr. Teresa Rodriguez de las Heras Baliel, arbitrator in the Madrid Court of Arbitration and the Spanish Court of Arbitration. And finally, we will be joined by Mr. Daniel Nogueira, director of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators Brazil branch. So everybody is encouraged to um, watch out and to really stay tuned for our next speaker. Of course, this event will also not be possible without our sponsors. So we would like to thank the University of San Agustin College of Law. Also, the Philippine Arbitration Center in the Visayas. And of course, the Sigma Alpha Lex, the Student Council of the University of San Agustin College of Law. The program will begin shortly. Okay, so to formally start our uh, program, may I call on Ms. Athena Marie Palomaria to lead the invocation. Let us bow our heads and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for gracing us with the presence of a truly remarkable speaker 
who's an expert in the field of alternative dispute resolution. Bless all of us who are here tonight, and may you grant us teachable hearts and minds as we partake of this once-in-a-lifetime gift. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Palomaria. Again, welcome everyone to Decoding Disputes, a lecture on domestic and international arbitration. So to formally welcome our participants for this evening, may I call on the Dean of the University of San Agustin College of Law, Attorney Josemari Benjamin Francisco Uterol, for his opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the second leg of this fourth week of this month-long series of arbitration seminars brought to us by the Philippine Arbitration Center in the Visayas and the Arbitration Law Students of Attorney Jonah Pueblo, President of the PACP. Tonight's lecturer, Attorney Maria Luisa Dominique Mauricio, may be young, but she is more than qualified to handle her assigned topic, the Uncitral Model Law and to explain the value of arbitration as a means of resolving cross-border disputes in our globalized world. On behalf of the College of Law, allow me to convey our appreciation to Attorney Mauricio for sharing her time, her insights, her experiences, and her expertise with us this evening. Thank you, Dean, for your kind words of welcome. So at this point, to introduce our speaker, may I call on our professor in alternative dispute resolution, Attorney Jonah Well, to introduce our speaker. So our speaker, Assistant Solicitor General, or rather as Assistant Solicitor of the Office of the Solicitor, General. She graduated uh, her Jewish doctor in June 2015 at the University of the Philippines and finished her master's degree at Columbia Law School, New York. She is being invited here because of her extensive Uh, and she's also being invited because she is the best example that you do not need to be old to practice arbitration. I hope her presence here will be an inspiration to all of you that there is a career for all of you in arbitration. You do not need to be so uh, you do not need to wait for 20 years to become an arbitration practitioner. Louis is the epitome of the young Filipino arbitrator. And sometimes she wonders why is she being pampered by us established arbitrators? Of course we have to because we look at her as the future of arbitration. She is very important. And obviously, uh, personally on my part, she knows that I will always support her and find a lot of avenues for her to uh, go on with her career in ADR and arbitration. For you right now, Louis is a very good character reference of what that there is potential for all of you, especially for you, uh, lady law students, that it is amazing to practice ADR. Ladies and gentlemen, attorney Marie. Ayong gabi sa inyong matanan. Ako galing si Attorney Luisa Mauricio. Madamo nga salamat sa inyo sa pag sa akin. Labi na gid kay Attorney Jonar Pueblo. So, alay ka tama ba yung 
pinagsasabi ko dito. <laughs> so, ang pinagsasabi ko namin yun. So, um, thank you so much. Um, let me uh, say that again in, um, in in English para po mas heartfelt. Um, thank you so much, actually. Um, first of all, to Attorney Jonar for that very heartfelt introduction. Hindi po ako ready na ganun po. A personal ang introduction pala ni Sir sa akin. So, um, thank you so much. I appreciate all that um, Attorney Jonar and the rest of the other arbitrators had been giving me, not just me, but all of the other more youthful um, practitioners. Um, I'd, I'd like to start everything with my um, sincerest thank yous. Madamong masalamat sa inyo, um, Attorney Jonar, and to the rest of um, the PDRCI that has been very, very, very very amiable and very good to me. So, um, as I said, I hope, hopefully I said that in your language. Ako po si um, Luisa Mauricio. Um, I am a member of the PDRCI. Um, that is where I met Attorney Jonar Pueblo, your um, professor. Um, and um, I would be discussing today the Uncitra model. Um, so, uh, just, just so I see everyone. So, Thank you so much pala po for opening your cameras. Um, it's a it's it's something it's a personal thing. I kind of want to see the people that I'm speaking to. So thank you so much for that. So um uh, I just want to ask for a show of hands or kahit na yung raise hand option ng Zoom. Sino ba dito yung may alam na Consideral model? You're not that familiar with Consideral model yet. Okay, so that is why okay, thank you so much. Um Sir Luis. But um, to the others, that is why I am here po. I will give you a brief introduction of the Oncetral Model Law. But to start, um, I, I, this is this is something that, okay, sorry, I'll, I'll start with house rules first. Um, I know I, I like has told you this, but um, I'm just going to repeat it. Um, if you want to ask any questions, please type them down po sa chat box. But um, I would be begging your indulgence na later ko na lang siya babasahin. Later na lang natin i-address yung mga questions so that, um, we ca so that we can make sure that I finish with my lecture um, uh, first. So, um, but if you, um, if there's something really pressing, like super you need to say it out loud, please just unmute yourself and we would be listening. Now, I always start every single lecture with two things. First, trying to put everyone on the same page. And also second, giving you actually a reason on why you will be listening to, listening to me for the next one and a half hours instead of just resting. So um, uh, if, if, if I may, I will share my screen. I kind of have a uh, half a presentation for that person. There you go. So um, I just have to full screen it. There. Can you guys see it? Can I, can I get a nod or something from everyone? Yes, attorney. All right. Thank you so much, Alika. So okay. There. So th so this is um this is sort of a thing that I wanna do. Because uh, ang pinaka na ikinis ako yung pag sa lecture. Um, yung mag start chat. Tapos you really don't know where the lecture is gonna go. Like parang surprise na everything. So that's why I, I always want to start with give you, giving you an outline on where we will actually be going this entire one and a half hours. And since we would be discussing the Oncetral Model Law, as you can see, I would start first with significance of the Oncetral Model Law, bakit yung kailangang makinig sa akin, and then I will go on to the introduction to Oncetral first, the body that created the Model Law, and then next, we will go provision by provision sa Oncetral Model Law, and then lastly, I will end with explaining to you bakit kailangan nyo malaman yung Oncetral Model Law. So, bali, nag-start tayo sa significance. We would also be ending with significance. I want to start my discussion um, about the significance of the Oncetral Model Law by taking you through all the topics that you have sat in the previous month. I will be... Um, so... On your screens are the modes of dispute resolution in a spectrum. The left most being the kind of dispute resolution that does not involve any external intervention 
up until the right side most, being the kind that involves the most institutionalized external intervention there is, which is the courts. Kasi, di ba, syempre, lahat tayo, we're in law school, ang alam natin, yung pinakamode of this peak resolution is going to court. So the first three, as you can see, the first three dots that are connected with the yellow line, they are the alternative modes to the, orig to the original and traditional resolution of disputes, which is, as I said kanina, going to court. Now, if you would remember, E.D. Irene Alogo discussed with you that these alternative modes of dispute resolution are overseen by the Office of the Alternative Dispute Resolution here in the Philippines. In the left, most side is negotiation. If you would remember, Attorney Panga told you that negotiation is a strategic discussion that resolves an issue in a way that both parties find acceptable without any other person um, trying to help them reach uh, a, uh, a resolution. Next naman is your mediation. Dito naman sa mediation, it's sort of like negotiation, but meron ng third party that is actually facilitating your discussion. This you particularly discuss with Engineer Salvador. And next is arbitration. As you already know by now, arbitration is a step forward from mediation, but also a step back from litigation. As defined in our ADR Act, which is RA 9285, arbitration is a voluntary dispute resolution process in which one or more arbitrators appointed in accordance with the agreement of the parties resolve a dispute by rendering an award. So yeah, so sinerkilan ko yung arbitration. There are different kinds of arbitration. I'm sure you know this already. There are a lot, but I would be enumerating for you right now only yung mga types that you have actually discussed the past few weeks. So you discussed barangay arbitration with E.D. Irene. You discussed construction arbitration with Justice Diaz Baldos. Then you moved on to discuss sports arbitration by attorney Arleo Magtibay, and then you have commercial arbitration, which you can classify into two, institutional and ad hoc. Institutional meaning ito yung ina-administer ng mga institutions like PDRCI, as what attorney Magtibay had um, explained to you. PICCR, just as what attorney Don Mark has told you, and ICC, or the International Chamber of Commerce, which you would know about the model. And so that's for institutional arbitration. Next naman is an ad hoc arbitration. If you would recall, ad hoc arbitration is just arbitration wherein the parties agree to arbitrate without being under the auspices or supervision of an institution. And for our purposes, um, we would be classifying right now ad hoc between domestic and international. And here, I want you to, um, to know this discussion better. We will be discussing this later on. But for our simpler purposes, and because we are starting right now, I would be telling you that the Uncetral Model Law at the onset applies to international commercial arbitration in general. But as you will see later on in our jurisdiction, nag apply pa rin siya sa domestic and international. But let's take it step by step. Okay, so when I was in law school, not so long ago, um, a few years ago, um, I wasn't really a fan of memorizing. And um, what I would do and what I was trained to do is I would have to understand the intent of the law. I would have to understand the intent of the case, why it was made, why the law was enacted. And because you understand how it came about, then you would be able to retain the information about that law or about that case for a longer time as opposed to just memorizing or parroting what the civil code or what the penal code says. So I kind of want to do that with you. I want to first explain to you 
ano ba yung body that created the modelo. I want you to understand where um, the framers of the modelo has actually come from. So let's start with sino nga ba tong Uncetral na to? What does Uncetral stand for? It's actually an acronym for the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. It's actually just the core legal body of the UN system in the field of international trade law. Meaning, in simple terms, parang siya yung international trade law sector ng United Nations. So here, the last bullet point, it says, universal, it has universal membership, specializing in commercial law reform worldwide for over 50 years. But as um, this is what they say lang in their website, they haven't updated it, but actually more than 50 years na siya. Here is a brief in history of the Uncetral Modelo. So I want you to imagine that we all went back in time and right now is 1965. I am Jonar Pueblo from Iloilo and I want to export my butterscotch brownies to New York. Ngayon, paano ko gagawin doon? Wala namang Google, hindi ko naman alam. Like, um, I, I, I don't know uh, what law would apply, ano yung mga requirements for me to be able to bring my butterscotch brownies to the other side of the world. So, because of this, sasab ako ako si, si Attorney Jonah Pueblo, sabi ko, I, I, just won't, I just won't export na lang. I, I'll, I'll just sell my butterscotch cookie, uh, brownies here in Iloilo lang. In that way, na-deprive nyo yung New York of your very world-famous butterscotch brownies. And in that way, nagkakaroon din ng disjunct kasi nasira yung flow ng trade. So that was what the United Nations actually took in hope of. That at that time, at 1965, walang way of actually knowing the different laws of different countries. And because people do not know mas hindi sila nagtatapang na magpunta sa ibang fund to share whatever um, export or import costs that they might have. And because of that, nasisira yung flow of trade. So the UN wanted to change that. And the UN decided to change that through coming up with the UNCITRAL. Para yung UNCITRAL, yung sector na yun, they would be the ones to study international trade law and how they can actually um, remedy the situation that I was telling you about. And um, the UNCITRAL actually came up with this mandate. So they were saying for them to be able to, uh, um, uh, for them to be able to um, solve the problem that the United Nations has given to them, they would be preparing legislative and non-legislative instruments with the intent of harmonizing and modernizing international trade. We said that this is to make sure that there is progress in international trade law and the, effect, the progress is effected harmoniously and uniformly by all states. Anong ibig sabihin nito? They just said that, um, ang, they just pointed out that the bulk of the problem is that iba-iba yung laws ng different states. Now, they said if you want a good flow of trade, international trade from one country or another, the laws of each country should be at least similar to each other. So, sabi ng UNCITRAL, for that to happen, we would be releasing some legislative samples na ibibigay namin sa states, ibibigay namin sa contracting parties, asking them or proposing to them um, the incorporation of these texts in their laws para um, kinalaunan, if every state would um, adopt it, then sort of may similarity na yung mga laws of different states. So basically, yun lang yung point nila. So how did they give effect to this mandate? What they did was, since kailangan nga nila ng um, uniform instruments, right? So they thought of inviting different states para may representative each state to share kung ano ba yung pamamalakad in their state. And during that discussion, they would come up with um, instruments na agreeable to all these different states. And actually, um, because ang daming ang involved, many different states involved, 
the result was a very inclusive process. What does that mean? It means that since yung mga, may mga representatives yung mga states, they felt that this um, instrument that uh, the UNCTRL has come up with is fair and is actually good for their own state. So, kasi nga, may representatives sila dun sa discussion na yun. So, what happened was, most of the states actually adopted it. So, yung, yung impact ng UNCTRL actually, in short, naging effective. What they did was they came up with three broad categories of instruments. Yung legislative, meaning yung mga instruments na um, they would be um, sending to the legislatures of every country for them to incorporate in their laws. Yung contractual instruments naman, yung mga um, instruments na ibibigay naman nila sa private parties um, para i-consider nila to put in their um, contracts. While the explanatory um, text naman is yung ibibigay nila dun sa mga highly specialized experts that would need highly specialized knowledge. Now, for today, for the UNCTRL Modelo, I want you to disregard the contractual and explanatory states first and focus your attention on the legislative text. In the legislative text, there are different kinds of texts. But what we should be focusing on is model law. So ano ba yung mga ginagawa ng UNCTRL na model law? So model laws are actually just texts that is recommended to the states for their enactment as part of their national law. So basically, that's, that's just what I said. And um, here I have for you in this slide the specific texts that the UNCTRL actually came up with throughout the years in order to, um, with the intent of harmonizing the laws of different states. And as you can see, nasa legislative po yung ating um, instrument for discussion, which is the UNCTRL Model Law on International Commercial Arbitration. So that is your introduction to UNCTRL. So I hope you have a brief idea kung ano ba yung UNCTRL and bakit sila naggagawa ng mga ganitong texts. Now, let's move on to UNCTRL model law um, as the instrument. So, um, actually, um, the UNCTRL model law was, um, in, in international commercial arbitration, sought to, um, to solve two main issues. That was one, inadequacy of domestic laws, and two, disparity between national laws. So here, sinasabi kasi nila nung 1960s, nung time na yon, nung nagsistart pa lang ang everything, um, arbitration was not that popular. And because arbitration wasn't that popular, kung nagkakaroon ng arbitration, ini-equate nila yung arbitration to litigation. And for the simple reason that domestic laws or the laws of the different states do not have arbitration in their laws. So sabi ng UNCTRAL, we have to have these states incorporate a model law that gives a law specifically to international commercial arbitration. So that was one. Second is the disparity between national laws. And I've touched upon this already kanina when I gave you the example about attorney Jonar exporting the butterscotch brownies. So yun nga, they acknowledge the fact na magkakaiba yung laws ng different states. And there is a need to um, harmonize or make one law na gagayahin ng lahat ng different parties na incorporate nila in their um, own laws para maging similar lahat yung treatment ng mga tao sa international commercial arbitration. And that's what they actually came up with. And um, right now, as of today, it reflects a worldwide consensus kasi nga, most states actually adopted it. And we would be discussing that more later. Keep in mind also that the model law covers all stages of your arbitral process. Isang mahabang procedure siya. Pag binasa niyo siya, parang kinukwento niya yung life cycle ng arbitration. The original text was released in 1985. And it was amended in 2006. 
Now, I would be discussing with you the 1985 um, Uncitral Model Law in its um, in, in greater detail for the simple reason that this is the law that uh, this is the model law that the Philippines has adopted. And then later on, I would be uh, discussing with you the revisions that the 2006 uh, model law has made, which are um, actually um, quite a lot as well. I encourage you to, um, kahit na later on, or if now, if, if, that, if you can do that, have a copy of the Uncitral Model Law on International Commercial Arbitration for you to actually skim and to see what exactly am I talking about here. Um, my in, the intent of my talk is not to get you through every single provision of the modern law. Um, I will be taking you through key features. So parang highlights lang, highlights lang tong talk na to, so that you get a brief overview of what the modern law is. And I want you to keep in mind that um, that's the intent of this entire lecture, so that you would be familiar with the flow and that you would understand how the model law plays in arbitration here in the Philippines. So, um, so there. And if you would have questions as regards um, um, as regards the nitty gritty details, then maybe we can um, talk about that a little bit later on if we have more time. Here is the uh, whole. Um, outline of the 1985 Uncitral Model Law. Um, okay, by the way, I would be referring it to the Uncitral Model Law lang, but then that's because all of us here are students of arbitration, and we know that when I say Uncitral Model Law, it is the Uncitral Model Law of International Commercial Arbitration. But please take note that there are other Uncitral Model Laws covering other inter so um, for our purposes, what we would be discussing is the Uncitral Model Law on International Commercial Arbitration. Okay, there. So I would start with general provisions. I would go a little bit slower here because I've always been um, a fan of the uh, saying that you would have to know um, what um, for what is this particular text applicable. That's the most important because um, if it's uh, if this is not applicable for a certain issue, then why bother go through um, this entire uh, model? Right? So let's start. So let's start with scope of application. And I have for you Article 1, Paragraphs 1 and 2. Paragraph 1 is the substantial scope of the model law, meaning ano ba yung mga transactions kung saan mag apply yung model law. Your second paragraph naman deals with your territorial scope, meaning in which jurisdictions would the model law be applicable. So, ganon. So, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be discussing a bit more. Article 1, so let's start with substantial, says that the model law applies to international commercial arbitration. Hopefully, by today, by tonight, alam nyo na what arbitration is. So I would be um, going to discuss with you what is international and what is commercial. Para kung alam nyo na na arbitration yun, based on all of your knowledge in the past seminars, madedetermine mo na madali kung international ba or commercial yung arbitration. So when is an arbitration international? And I have for you a very fun table that I am very proud of. Okay? Um, this is a very practical um, Siyempre, binuhat ko yung sarili kong bangko. Kasi ako yung gumawa nito. Much like, um, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a very practical take on the provision. So that you see it visually. I'm a visual learner kasi. So, um, take note that um, when I refer to nationality, makita nyo yung nationality is nandoon sa buildings katabi ng mga babae. And um, this actually just reflects um, the sentiment of the Uncetral na those people that that engage in um, international trade transactions aren't really individuals, but more really corporations where the nationality of such corporations is determined by their places of business. So if you would check the Uncetral Modelo, nakasulat doon place of business. It just means nationality. So um, for, for uh, just to be brief, um, I won't read my notes now. Yung first scenario, 
this scenario, the bulk of um, international trade transactions actually falls under this DAO. That's what they said. So that is when magkaiba yung nationality ng two parties. And here, um, if magkaiba yung nationality ng two parties, then it is considered international. Here naman in the second scenario, even though the places of business or the nationalities of your two parties is the same, if your place of arbitration or your seat of arbitration is outside or is different from the nationalities of the two, then your arbitration is still considered as international. Thirdly, kung pareho pa rin yung, uh, yung premise is pareho pa rin yung nationality ng both parties, pero yung place of substantial um, performance of your contract is somewhere else, then international pa rin siya. The fourth situation, kahit the same yung nationalities of both parties, if the place of the subject matter of the dispute is, for example, in our particular scenario in the site in China, kahit na dalawang Filipino yung naglalapat, it is still considered as international. And lastly, by express agreement. And um, I, I, uh, this is my favorite situation to discuss. There is so much debate on this. Um, uh, many people say that this is not international, but actually the fifth, um, the fifth situation was put there by um, the conceptual framers for the simple reason that they want to highlight the fact that um, freedom to the parties is given um, in whether they want to classify their dispute as international and hence coming under the model law. So, yun lang yun. So, by express agreement of the parties, kahit na walang foreign element whatsoever in your contract, it may still be considered international uh, in the model. So, the next um, uh, term that we are going to define is commercial. So, alam mo na yung international, alam mo na yung uh, arbitration, ano naman daw yung commercial? Walang strict definition. Actually, naka footnote lang to if you have your uh, model loss with you. Makita nyo, it's only a footnote. And the footnote even doesn't give a specific definition. Ang sabi lang nila, commercial um, should be given a wide inter interpretation so as to cover matters arising from all relationships of a commercial nature, whether contractual or not. And here, actually, the purpose of this provision was to highlight the fact that um, the parties aren't really confined with the domestic law definition of commercial in their particular home states. If they feel that their transaction is commercial, they can always justify it. Basically, yun lang yung sinasabi nitong part na to. Now, let's move on to the, to to the territorial aspect of the model law. Um, which jurisdictions ba nag apply Here, it's just saying that the model law, as enacted in a given state, applies only if the place of arbitration is the territory of that state. Now, I want to give you an example that is close to home. As we all know, the 1985 model law was adopted by RA 9285, meaning in the Philippines, ina-adopt natin yung 1985 Conceptual Model Law. So, having said that, RA 9285 and 1985 Model Law as adopted by RA 9285 is applicable only in the Philippines. Kasi nga, yun lang yung jurisdiction niya. Of course, there are um, this, uh, is exceptions, as you can see very well in your screens. But these exceptions actually just... Um, uh, you will see later, we would be discussing that later, but you would see that this is out of necessity. Kasi itong mga articles na to deals with recognition and enforcement of your award. Meaning, meron kang award, gusto mong recognize or enforce sa another state, not your home state. So, so because of that, kasi because of necessity, then um, territoriality principle does not apply. So next um, provision that I want to highlight is Article 5, which gives you the exact extent of court intervention. Here, it reflects the trend even in 1985 in favor of limiting and 
clearly defining court involvement in terms of international arbitration. Pinapakita lang dito na kung chinus ng parties ang arbitration, ang courts ay merong limited power lang over them for the simple reason that the parties actually went to arbitration kasi nga, they do not want to be bound by the processes of the court. Now, I would be pointing out a few principles here that for you, baka parang bakit pa nila kailangan ilagay dyan? Eh, alam naman na natin yan. Well, these principles are ingrained principles already now in 2021. Pero isipin nyo, noong 1985, bago pa lang lahat ng mga concepts na to, and um, there was really a necessity to put it into law so that parties would actually believe that it is true. So there, so um, that's what I said also. There would, of course, there would be exceptions, but then these exceptions are just out of necessity. What do I mean by that? If you would go through the exceptions, they are just um, those um, types of actions that the arbitral tribunal does not have jurisdiction over. Like, for example, third party or... Um, uh, subpoena, yung mga, yung mga normal um, powers na wala naman talaga yung arbitral tribunal. Of course, sa court ka pupunta if you need those things. So that is your scope. So now, alam mo na kung saan at kung kailan nag apply ang concentral model law. Now, let's go on to um, the, what I told you that they try to give you a certain procedure um, uh, of the entire arbitration process. So let's start with chapter 2, which is, which is the arbitration agreement. Um, here, the definition of arbitration agreement just really recognizes the validity and effect of a commitment by the parties to submit arbit to arbitration an existing or a future dispute. So that's a handful to say, but you can see it in your screen. It's just the first sentence. Now, I want to bring you to the second paragraph of the same article, also trying to define what arbitration agreement is. Here, I highlighted the phrase, in writing. So this follows the New York Convention definition requiring the arbitration agreement to be in writing, meaning nakasulat na sa kontrata siya. And the next few sentences only just clarifies to you what in writing means. But I want you to tab this because this is one of the key revisions of the 2006 model law. So isipin nyo, pag 1985 model law ang pinag-uusapan, ang arbitration agreement has to be in writing. No questions asked. And here I have for you a summary of the relationship between arbitration agreements and courts. So these are only... Um, uh, if, if you were a judge, then this is very relevant for you because these um, uh, articles actually speak to the courts. Dito sinasabi ng model law, the model law, model law is dictating to the courts what exactly they can do when an arbitration agreement um, is in their courts or when certain um, interim measures of protection for arbitral, um, arbitral issues are presented in their courts. So um, just remember, Articles 8 and 9 is speaking to the courts. What the courts can do kapag may, arbitra uh, may, may issue in front of them that has an arbitration agreement. Yun lang yun. Next is your composition of the arbitral tribunal. And really, if you go through your model law, you would see detailed provisions on appointment, challenge, termination, Basta lahat, anything that has to do with the arbitrators. Um, this chapter is actually a perfect example of the modern law trying to make um, the life of our merchants easier and eliminating difficulties in international trade. Why is that so? Um, I say that because um, it first, the general rule, sinasabi niya yung general rule in arbitration na both parties, if you want to... Um, choose uh, the rules of procedure that would govern your arbitration, then you are free to do that. Kaya lang, di ba, pag kunwari may chinus tayo, ni, tayo ni, me and Alaika, naka-dispute tayo, sabi natin, um, let's say for example, um, the, the PACV arbitration rules would apply. 
Kaya lang, nakita natin, merong kulang na provision doon about appointment of arbitrators. So, hindi natin alam kung paano mag appoint ng arbitrators. So, parang, what would we do? So, matatagalan pa. Magkakaroon, masasak yung arbitration process for the simple reason that we do not know what to do next. So, what the model does is that kapag merong ganon, pag if it is incomplete or may disjunct in the law, then you can go to the model law. So, kung ano yung incomplete dun sa rules na pinili mo, you can go to the model law for completion. So, parang, um, it would be, para siyang panakit butas dun sa mga, mga, um, issues na hindi na-address ng mga other laws. Kaya ko sinasabi na it's, um, it's, it's, it's intent is mapadali yung, um, uh, yung flow of trade because it ensures na wala kang, um, walang impediment doon sa yung arbitration process. And here it also says that if no rule is chosen, chosen then siyempre, the model law would still apply. And ito pa, kahit na pag nag-apply yung model law, but nagkaroon ng difficulties pa rin yung parties, then they can always resort to courts. So, bale, pinasakan nila lahat ng butas doon sa barrel. So, fourth is jurisdiction of the arbitral tribunal. And here, um, uh, if you would recall, sabi ko kanina, merong certain principles na for us, ingrained na, na hindi na kailangan sabihin. Kasi alam naman natin na pag sinabi mong arbitration, ito yung mga characteristics niya. But then again, think of it as you being in 1985. Hindi pa popular yung arbitration. Yung mga ibang tao, di pa alam kung ano yung arbitration. So they had to put all the arbitration principles as part of the model law. That is why for your Article 16, you have your very gas-gas doctrine of competence-competence and your separability clause on the second model. So just take note of that. So Article 16 is just really competence-competence and the separability clause. It's basically just giving your tribunals the freedom to um, rule on its own jurisdiction and also um, to... Uh, deem, to, to, to deem your arbitration agreement valid um, kahit na void or kinocontend na void yung whole um, contract mo. I'm sure you're very much familiar with that. And here also, I want to point out na kahit na nung time na yon meron ng one article on the power to order interim measures by the arbitral tribunal. Um, this is not that... Um, uh, this is not that crucial for uh, 1985, but I want you to tab this. I want you to highlight the fact that isang paragraph lang siya um, in the 1985 Constitutional Model Law because we would be discussing that later on to so 2006 Model Law. Now we go to the um, conduct of arbitral proceedings. So nasa gitna na tayo ng Model Law. Here, this is a very important provision, and I want you to take note of that. That this is an important, um, this is an important provision, and that is because um, it um, it shows to you uh, really just the fundamental requirements for procedural due process. I mean, it's a mean on such big terms. It means that parties should be treated equally and each be given the full opportunity to present its case. This is very important because if you would skim your model law, if you would skim your other arbitration rules, hindi kayo binibigyan ng exact way kung paano gawin yung makikiri. The parties have the freedom to choose how exactly they want to go through step by step in their arbitration hearing, kung gusto ba nila sa tabi ng dagat or whatever, they can do that. They are free to do that just as long as they agree. But ang requirement lang is that lahat ng mga um, choices nila on how hearings would be made should be in accordance with uh, the uh, the party's right to be fully um, heard, to fully present its case, and to be treated equally. And the next few provisions actually just implement this mother provision, as I would call it. Um, I have for you there that um, uh, some uh, some provisions, but you can go through that on your own. Just the basic yun lang yun. If you think about it, if you become an arbitrator someday, just think that you're hearing, you have the freedom to actually rule 
how exactly you want to go about your hearings, just as long as you treat your parties equally and that they each be given a full opportunity to present their case. Something that I think is very familiar naman to everyone since um, you are all law students and you've been all through Consti Law, I'm sure, and um, who doesn't recall the constitutional right to Next is the determination of rules of procedure. Again, this is one of the um, provisions na ngayon neglected na kasi alam naman natin in arbitration, ganyan naman talaga yung procedure. The parties have the freedom to agree on the procedure subject to a few mandatory procedural provisions and then kung hindi sila makapag-agree, yung tribunal naman yung makakapag-decide on the matter. So this was very crucial because this is very unique at that time kasi nga, they were all court litigation oriented. So, that's why it's here. Another important provision is Article 25, and that is the fault of the party. You may not realize it now because you're still in law school, but if you go into practice like attorney donor and me, you realize nyo na meron at meron kayong magiging co-lawyers or co-leads or actually just pretty much anyone that would take advantage of every possible um, excuse to delay the proceedings if this is in their favor. And um, this article makes sure that the tribunal can carry out its task of arbitrating the proceedings even though the parties do not participate. So here, ang nangyayari lang, kung nagdadelaying tactics ka dyan, wala ka, hindi ka uobra sa arbitral tribunal because of this provision. Now, next is um, Chapter 6, which is the making and the, of the award and the termination of the proceedings. And if you would go through um, Chapter 6, this is very worthy, very lengthy, very full of information, um, something that we shouldn't be doing today. So um, I would just present to you um, uh, like a brief overview. So it's two parts. It's um, the making of an award first. And here it's just showing to you kung paano ba... Sorry, excuse me, gagawin yung award ng arbitrator based on the substantial law and the procedural law. I have a little summary for you there, but um, if you want to go through them one by one, you can check them on the law itself. And the other part of Chapter 6 let naman deals with the termination of proceedings. Um, here it just tells you kung kailan ba um, Tumitigil yung, ano ba yung hangganan ng arbitration proceedings mo? Kailan nawawala yung mandate ng arbitral tribunal mo? And this might be important um, in terms of your reliefs later on. Next is your recourse against award. So this might not be super um, something that you would be interested in especially because you're just in law school. I'm saying this out of experience kasi ito yung mga bagay na hindi ko naman um, iniintindi when I was in law school. But then if you go, um, if you start practice, ang una nga hanapin mo is kung ano yung remedy mo just in case natalo ka, di ba? So, um, so ito yung, uh, this is uh, the remedy that the model law actually gives. I'm sure you're very familiar with this. Is you would be applying for a set aside. Now, um, when I was in law school, I, I what I do is, um, Sorry, Alaika, do we have that? Where are we in time? So I know if I if I would do the anecdotes. <laughs> no, I think it's okay, attorney. Okay, so think how many uh, do we have? Like, um, I think I'll just check in. Sorry, I'm going But okay, no, it's, it's, okay. it's okay, attorney. Just take your time. It's okay. okay, thank you so much. Okay, so I can I can... Well, yeah, okay, I can, I can tell you my story. So this is my story. Um, um, uh, so um, when I was in, well, wala pala akong ADR ng law school. So when I was studying ADR, um, when I was a lawyer, when I was a young lawyer, um, nahihirapan ako to, um, to, uh, to memorize dates. Nahihirapan ako to memorize yung time periods. Nakapag-civil procedure na ba kayo? Can I get a nod or ano? Nakapag-civil procedure na ba kayo? Or not? We're yet? taking it na, uh, in this um, attorney. Diba sobrang daming time periods? Like, how in the world are you gonna um, have all of those time periods in your head? So I had to make sure 
um, that I had something, like a more practical way of remembering these things para hindi ko siya nakakalimutan. So here, I want to share with you um, how I can, until now, remember the time period and all the concepts of the set aside. Napanood niyo ba yung, ano, yung One More Chance? Alam niyo ba yun? Yung movie ni John Lord at ni Bea? Naaalala niyo ba yung, ano, yung scene sa Cubao X, yung galit na galit si John Lord kasi binayolate ni Bea yung three-month rule? Well, yan. Yung three-month rule nila, di ba? So yung three-month rule ni Bea at ni John Lord is pag nakipag-break ka, hindi ka pwedeng mag-date ulit three months. Kasi unfair yun to the other party, di ba? So that's the three-month rule. Now I want you to apply the three-month rule pabalik tag. Here in arbitration, you can only set aside an award three months. So hindi nyo na makakalimutan yun. I am very sure. So um, so three months lang um, yung pwede yung, yung liwe mo to have an award kung saan um, maset aside. Now, um, another one more chance reference that I want you to ingrain. Um, I'm sure uh, alam niyo na yung characteristic of the arbitration award being final um, and enforceable once it's out. So here, yung application for set aside mo, that is your exclusive recourse. So lagi ko iniisip noon, hindi pwedeng may mga salvador sa tabi ni John Lloyd kasi exclusive lang si Bea and si John Lloyd. So matawa po kayo, pero po, maaalala niyo po to. I promise you, and you will be thanking me in the future. So exclusive lang po. Isa lang, hindi pwede. Walang mga salvador dito. Exclusive application for set aside. Yun lang po yung pwede niyong pwede. And also, sa grounds, exclusive din po yung grounds for set aside, which is on your screens right now. And kung ako po sa inyo, I would be memorizing this early on kasi paulit-ulit po yan. As we can see in our last chapter, which is chapter 8, in recognition and enforcement of the award. Now, actually po, nung, okay, I can, I'll, 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 I'll use this slide. Nung nagsuspart po ako, well, actually, until now, um, mas mahirap mang aminin. Um, I hope hindi nakikinig si Sir Donald. Uh, um, nalilito po ako kung ano ba yung, um, kung, bak kung magkaiba ba yung set aside sa recognition and enforcement. Kasi di ba parang pareho lang naman po siyang revenue. Pero bakit magkaiba pa? Pero pag tinignan nyo, ito na po yung recognition and enforcement slide pareho pa rin yung grounds ng set aside sa recognition and enforcement. So just um just to uh, help you a bit there. Kapag po set aside, um lagi ko pong iniisip um ito po yung set aside, you can only do the set aside kung saan yung seat of arbitration. So pareho silang S. So set aside, doon mo lang magagawa sa seat. So when you say naman recognition and enforcement, magpaparecognize ka sa iba, hindi dun sa sarili ko. So, sa iba, recognition and enforcement. So, um, that, that's just a, a little trade. But, um, sinek ko lang po kung gising ko lahat ko. But yeah, so, so um, to jump up from there, um, as I told you, pareho nga po yung grounds ng set aside at saka ng recognition and enforcement. And why is this so? Ginawa po ito ng unsitral kasi gusto nga po nila, di ba kanina, sinabi ko sa inyo, na uniform po yung rules para hindi nalilito yung mga tao. Although magkaiba yung recourse mo um, sa set aside tsaka sa refu um, refusal and of recognition and enforcement, we make sure po ni Uncitral na yung causes nyo, yung reasons nyo for actually asking for recognition or enforcement or of set aside ay pare-pareho. Para hindi po tayo malito, for example, pag pumunta kayo sa Hong Kong, Pareho pa rin po yung grounds ng recognition and enforcement nila doon sa grounds po natin dito sa Pilipinas ng recognition. So it's it's just as simple as that. And that actually ends your 1985 Central Modern Law overview. Now, um it was uh, it was very practical back then. Some states actually um Sinabi ko na po sa inyo, makita nyo din mamaya na yung mga states, they already incorporated the 1985 Concentral Modeling 
in their system and it was very effective. It actually um, facilitated trade, meaning mas maraming taong naingganyo, mas maraming taong hindi natakot mag, uh, ng ibang bansa at magdala doon ng mga products nila. But then, um, as you would um, actually surmise, it's 1985, uh, mga ilang dekada na po yung nakaraan, Siyempre, meron na pong mga different innovations na nangyari. Hindi naman kung ano yung meron noong 1985, yun pa rin yung meron noong 2006. So, um, uh, Unsipral decided to revise um, the model load to conform naman with the times. And um, since we are in law school, and lahat naman po tayo very um, adept na sa Socratic method, um, I always, always tell everyone when I do this lecture that if you, if your law professor asks you for the, um, for the, the key differences between the 1985 Concentral Modelo and the 2006 Modelo, you would just be answering what you see in the slide. The two umbrella um, revisions that were made was just in the form of the arbitration agreement and in the granting of the interim measures. And as later on, ko ko sa inyo, this was really because of, uh, to conform to the times uh, that, uh, to, to conform to the 2006 times. Okay, uh, just give me a few seconds. I just have to... Okay, there you go. And here, um, they wanted as much as possible so to make it uniform. And why is that so? So, ayaw po nila kasi matakot yung ating um, more senior practitioners, like a very donor pueblo, to use yung mga makabagong model or yung mga, yung mga newest innovations. So, they tried to make sure that uh, the outline or the whole body was actually sort of still similar to your 1985 Uncetral Modulo. That's why you see here, makikita nyo po, nag-iba na yung year dito sa upper left hand, 2006 na yung nakalagay. But then, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga chapters, walang nagbago, pareho pa rin, sila pa rin yun. Yan pa rin yung form. I just highlighted in yellow those um, chapters that they had their revisions. Now, I'll go, I'll walk you through the questions. Ito, um, this is, uh, this is, this is necessity also. Um, you don't have to think much about that. This just um, deals mamaya with the interim measures part. So pag dinispas natin yung interim measures, we get us kung bakit meron yan sa uh, territoriality, etc. And here, um, this is not a key revision. I want to highlight this as well. Sinasabi lang dito na if you would be interpreting the provisions of the model, you would have to take into account now international, internationally accepted principles and also that the intent of the model is to have a uniform understanding in across the board sa lahat ng states. So basically, in-acknowledge lang na yung fact na yung model law is incorporated na in different states right now and binibigyan lang niya ng warning niyo kung may users that when you use this, you cannot interpret it in a, in a one-state matter. You have to give it an international um, interpretation because that is what the instrument is right now. And here is one of the key revisions that I want to take note. Kalimutan niyo na ang lakad, huwag lang ito. So recall that in 1985, your version there says that your arbitration agreement has to be in writing. Now, that object dito, you know, maka of um, merchants. Bakit ganon? Let's see, um, I'll give you, ito daw yung example na pinibigyan ko lang. So, ano yung, um, and I thought, could you help me, um, is there a name of the port of Iloilo? At may name pa po yung port dito. Would you know? Um, if it's uh, just the illegal port, I'm not sure if anyone can correct me then. Okay, so for example, si Alaika is a merchant um, in, and she is doing business in the port of Pino Pino. Meron siyang uh, barco. Okay, so she owns, a, she owns a ship and in this ship, um, nagta-transport siya ng, ng 
Sorry, hindi ko po talaga makalimutan na kayo yung butterscotch brownies. So, tinatransport niya yung butterscotch brownies from Iloilo to, let's say, um, Singapore. Uh, so, ganon. So, uh, so, ngayon, um, meron siyang mga supplier, syempre, kasi yung sa kanya yung bad ko eh. So, si attorney Jonar, um, siya yung supplier niya, supplier ni Laika ng um, butterscotch brownies. So, today, aalitis na yung bar ko in 5 minutes. Dumating na si Sir Jonar, daladala yung box-box ng mga butterscotch cookies. Sabi ni uh, ni Jonar sa kanya, oh, ito na yung, na, ito na yung nasa kontrata natin. Kaya lang, sabi niya ganun, meron ako dito extra chocolate crackers that I want hindi dapat tapas pa. Sorry, di ba? Meron. <laughs> okay. But, uh, meron akong extra dito na lapas pa. Sorry. Ingredients na gusto ko din dalhin mo sa Singapore kasi sabi ng kuya ko doon, it's gonna be the next hit there. And it's gonna be the dito. So, Alayka says, okay, sure, no problem. So, sabi ni, pero sabi ni Alayka, akin na, binisan mo na kasi palis na yung barko. So, sabi niya, Attorney Jonas, sandali lang, sandali lang kunin ko yung laptop ko, gawa ko ng kontrata, talagay ko arbitration clause, just in case hindi tayo magkaigit yan. So, sabi ni Laika, ni Alaika, may eh, five minutes na lang, paalis na yung barko, may time ka pa ba mag, mag, mag-print-print dyan, di ba? So, sabi sabi niya, Attorney Jonas, o oh, sige, sige, basta yung pag-agree na lang natin, na kapag um, hindi ka nagbayad sa akin, eh di mag-arbitration tayo. So, sabi ni Laika, o oh, sige, 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 yun yung agreement natin. Eh di nangyari ganun. Eh hindi nagbayad si Laika. So, sabi ni um, ato ni Jonar, o oh, sige, um, mag-arbitration na tayo, di ba nag-agree tayo na arbit, mag-arbitration tayo? Ano ngayon ang sasabihin ni Laika? Sasabihin ni Laika, anong arbitration? Ano ang um, prueba mo na meron tayong arbitration na dito? Wala. So, um, so, yun. So, keep that in mind. So, yun yung um, kinakagalit ng mga parties. They're saying that there would be moments that you do not have the chance to actually get um, a laptop and write down all your contractual terms. There would be times where magiging verbal lang yung agreement. So I don't know kung merong bang taong nag-verbal agreement na parang arbitration tayo ha, just in case lukohin mo ako. But that was the idea. Um, The idea was um, if you only had time to speak to the person and to actually verbally agree um, that you guys would go to arbitration or that um, uh, you uh, would uh, come up with a writing that is not really a contractual kind of writing, um, yung mapili someday, um, gusto nung mga merchants at that time na enforceable yung arbitration agreements. And uh, the, um, matawid ako dun sa example, no, and the revisers actually um, took that into consideration and they gave the practitioner two options. The first option actually just has the same definition of an arbitration agreement. Um, and, and the second sentence says that um, it has to be in writing as well. But take note that this option departs um, from, uh, from the requirement that it has to be in some form. It says here that the arbitration agreement may be written in a, sorry, may be recorded, hindi pala written, in any form. So, hindi na lang in writing. So, videohan mo na lang si Laika, gano'n. Si Laika, pwede din yun. So, um, uh, no, uh, yeah, that's just that. And, um, the second option naman is the more liberal option. So, um, this option actually would go under yung dun sa very extreme uh, example that I gave you. It omits any form of recording. And um, uh, I would just like to note that one of the jurisdictions that actually adopts option number two is Denmark. So the next important provision is the revisions they made in interrogations. And they revised this also because of the pagreklamo ng mga practice. They are saying that in 1985, ng mga but when you come to 2002, medyo magalis na yung transactions in trade. And that's brought about by computers, by telefax. So parang mas napapabilis na yung um, transactions. And sabi nila, kung mabilis yung transactions, marami din mabilis na manglulokos sa kanila. So they would want something that, um, that is fast or a link that is fast 
and that would actually help them in front of in front of that's supposed to be Spanish. So um the revised state have a one whole chapter in interim measures of prevention. The first section actually gives a very specific two test um, definition of when interim measures may be approved. And then um, section two gives you what we call a preliminary order. This is um, reminiscent of your temporary restraining order. If you're starting pa lang with civil procedure, hindi ka pa siya mamimit, but in time you will meet the temporary restraining order. So parang habang dine-decide kung i-grant ba or hindi yung interim measures mo, pwede yung status mo muna parang ops, please, muna tayo lahat until ma-decide ng tribunal mo kung ano ba yung magagali. Section 4 is very important because here, um, they made interim measures of protection subject to recognition and enforcement reports. So, ibig sabihin, if yung other party hindi nagko-comply sa interim measures mo, meron kang recourse. And Section 5 just um, shows you the relationship with court or their interim measures. The last, um, the last revision that they made is um, just reflects actually the liberality in the formal requirements in Article 7, as I told you a while ago. So here, on the presentation of a copy of the arbitration award, I'm sorry, arbitration agreement is no longer required. And that is because, katulad ng ating scenario kanina, pwede hindi naman kasi na nakakopy siya. So that um, concludes my walk, my walk, walking you through the entire arbitration process. Now, um, the model law was chosen um, because they wanted actually to harmonize the laws in international trade. As Karina ko pa pa ulit ulit sa inyo. Pero, it, um, the, as I told you in a while ago, the intent of harmonization wasn't really a totalitarian time. Meaning, they wanted to harmonize it. They want all the laws to be similar. Pero they also told the states na parang, you know what, ikaw na bahala. Kung gusto mong mag-add or mag-subtract depending dun sa pangangailangan ng state mo. Just as long as yung intent and yung whole idea of the model law is incorporated in this. And since the model law was considered a vehicle of harmonization, it might be good to know kung harmonized na ba talaga ang world on international commercial arbitrage. So if you would go to the Uncentral um Uncentral site or you would see um you would just click the status page and then you would see who sino sino ba yung mga states that are uh that have actually adopted the model law. So we call them actually model law jurisdictions. Um just a caveat um the states um so um, the Unsecure Secretariat always says na parang indicative lang po tong list na to because yun na, um, each country can add their own groove to, um, the, uh, uh, to, to their legislation. So, but basically, they're, they're saying na parang pag naka-register ka dito, ibig sabihin, merong sort of hint of model though in your system. Okay, uh, so here actually um, I checked again today, uh, medyo maging yung PowerPoint ko. Um, now, um, 85 states na yung nag-adopt ng model ko with a total of 118 jurisdictions. The latest just this year, 2021, is Uzbekistan. So kung gusto mo na, alay ka mag-import sa Uzbekistan na butterscotch brownies ninyo, then you can very much do it because they are already a model law jurisdiction. Now, um, if, um, uh, so what I did was I counted, may kita nyo table yun, kinaunt ko, around 68-ish um, yung nag-adopt um, ng 1985 Bonsetral model law, while around 48-ish yung nag-adopt ng 2016 Uncetral model law. 
So, um, kaya, as you can see yung discussion ko kanina, I still had to walk you through the 1985 Concentral Model Law for the simple reason that mas marami pa rin ang states na um, nag-a-adhere to um, this uh, version of the model law. So, uh, just uh, so there, um, I just I just want to walk you through my slide. If you would look closely, um, meron naman dyan yung... Uh, so, bale, I, I just literally screen grab this from the Ultimate website. But see, if you would see the legend, yung dark blue, those are the legislation na... Those are states where in your legislation nila has already incorporated the modern law. And yung mga light blue naman is yung... Um, uh, legislation is based on the model law adopted only in certain subnational ju jurisdictions. What does that mean? So, um, uh, just to give you an example, so para magets to lang ibig sabihin ng light blue. As you can see, the Bayong United States, can you see my pointer ba? So here, this, this part, United States, light blue siya. What does this mean? Hindi po inadopt ng federal law, ng federal, U.S. federal law, ang Concentral Model Law. What they have is what they call the U.S. Federal Arbitration Act. Pero, since like blue siya, merong few states, kasi sila di ba pag iba yung federal law, iba yung state law. Yung state law, they can enact their own laws. Merong certain states that have actually adopted the model law. And that is California, Connecticut, Illinois, Louisiana, Oregon, and Texas. So, yun yung mga model law jurisdictions nyo sa loob ng United States. So, yun lang yung ibig sabihin niya. Parang, um, hindi yung buong um, federation, yung, um, uh, that's a very archaic US term, but yeah, um, so, um, hindi yung buong federation yung nag-a-adopt ng model law, but just certain state laws. You would also see, if you try and look closely pa, yung UK, um, light blue din siya, and that's because na hindi lahat sila nag-adopt pa rin ng model law. And um, some, uh, so I think Denmark and Scotland do are model law jurisdictions. So keep that in mind, lalo na kung mag-demigation kayo. And of course, syempre, um, we would be remiss if we do not discuss uh, model law in terms of the Philippines. So nasaan ba um, Philippines um, in model law terms. Okay, sorry, magpa-back lang ako para to give you context. So, kung, kung nag-squint kayo ng eyes nyo sa UK, squint nyo pa a little bit more to your right and you can see na dark blue po ang Philippines. Meaning, inadopt po ng jurisdiction natin ang model law. And if you would actually open your Republic Act 9285, your law, your ABR Act, you would see that Section 19 explicitly says that adopts international commercial arbitration adopts the 1985 Concentral Model Law in its entirety as the country's law on international commercial arbitration. Now, um, I want to point out just a few things. Firstly, di ba sinabi ko sa inyo that the model law lang naman is para like a soft directive. The states can add their own groove to the model law. And this is what the Philippines actually did. Um, our ADR Act, RA9285, was enacted in 2004. Um, take note that um, no 1985 pa yung Concentral Model Law. So na-realize ng mga legislators natin na parang, medyo kulang. We have to conform to international standards in 2004. That is why they decided to add these provisions in front of you. These provisions are not um, stranger to you right now, precisely because ito yung mga naging um, additions dun sa 2006 kung central modelo, more or less. Pero in anticipate ng legislature natin, um, kasi nga 2004, remember 2006 na inak yung model law. So, noong 2004, our legislature endeavored to add these particular provisions just so it can fill the gap between 1985 and 2004. Um, I can go through them one by one, but I am sure um, alam nyo na po lahat yan. And it's very much self-explanatory if you would go to our 1895. 
it's just um practical to know that in the Philippines, kung international commercial arbitration ang inyong arbitration, the 1985 kung central modern law applies. And next here, um, lagi namin pong sinasabi na it is not entirely accurate to say that the modern law only applies to international commercial arbitration. Section 33 of RA 9285 adopts certain articles of the model law into domestic arbitration. And for your convenience, I have it in front of you already. So yung mga provisions na yan, ng consequential model law, kahit na domestic yung, legislate, uh, yung, yung arbitration natin, mag-a-apply pa rin yan. So you can still use the model law in those particular circumstances. <coughs> And the last part of my last part, second to the last part, is the relevance of my discussion. So as I was telling you, I, I'm I, I put premium on the significance of why I'm actually speaking in front of you. And um I wanna point out two things. First, this is relevant so that you would know what law is applicable. What do I mean by that? As you can see, Kanina. Dun sa slide on the uh, status of the Uncetral Modern Law, a lot of jurisdictions aside from the Philippines actually adopts the Modern Law. And because of this, ibig sabihin po nun, dun sa mga jurisdictions na color blue dun sa map na yun, you are more or less familiar how international commercial arbitration is practiced in those jurisdictions. So pag may klienteng, pumunta sa inyo nagsabi, Uzbekistan law applies. International commercial arbitration. Pwede ba kitang kuning counsel? Ang sagot mo, of course. Kasi, alam mo na, more or less, kung ano, sinasabi ko more or less, kailangan mo pa rin mag-aral, but more or less, you do know the flow, or um, uh, you do know na both the law jurisdiction na, and familiar ka na with the laws itself. And then secondly, is you would know what version to use. So, um, naka Facebook Live po tayo. So, uh, well, oh, sige, okay lang naman. Um, kasi po, uh, so I work for the Solicitor General, um, but then we, we work in different divisions po. So, uh, when I say my boss, I am not referring to the Solicitor General himself, but to the Assistant Solicitor General that um, I report to. So, um, we had one arbitration actually, um, and then, um, well, this, uh, sabi niya sa akin, uh, nakasulat po dun sa arbitration clause namin. This is not, an, uh, hindi siya applicable kasi modulo yung pinag-usapan natin, but um, nakasulat naman dun sa arbitration clause namin was on citral arbitration rules. So sabi, sabi niya sa akin, sabi ng boss ko sa akin, um, uh, ano ba yung, ano, ano ba ibig sabihin ng on citral arbitration rules? Sabi ko, sir, there are different versions. Sabi. Sabi niya, what are the different versions? So sinabi ko yung years kung kailan na-revise, revise yung arbitration rules. So sabi niya, okay, sige, um, ano yung differences? So wala po akong masagot. <laughs> but then, so after that na, um, I've been an advocate of knowing which version to use because um, if, if it's practical and depending on who you are actually depending at a particular time, you would find out that knowing the nuances in the different version would actually um, uh, be in your favor. So as an advocate, um, this, uh, this, is a, this is a good uh, way of knowing kung ano ba yung difference nung kalawa, kung ano ba yung mas favorable sa'yo, and ano ba yung gagamitin. Now, the last section that I want to do is what you should be expecting from Unsecural in terms of international commercial arbitration in the next few years. So since it's a body, it's um it's a dynamic body, meaning um hindi po sila tumitigil ng kaka-revise, ng kaka-revise ng mga texts to conform with the times. And right now, um the working group who has just been recently concluded despite the pandemic, and there is um focus on exped on including expedited arbitration procedures in ad hoc arbitration. So ito po yung mga arbitration, 
yung mga ways kung paano po mapapabilis pa yung um, pag-resolve ng disputes nila. Because yun, yun nga po, if noong 2006, mabilis na po yung transactions as compared to 1985, then mas mabilis pa po right now ng 2021. And they are trying to um, make the text conform with our lives. And another um, area that they actually focus on but with is the conduct of arbitrators um, and their independence and impartiality. But that's not our concern. So that ends my presentation. I hope you got to learn something. Um, and um, I'm ready for your questions both um, in my topic and wherever else. <laughs> so thank you again for having me, PACB, um, to USA Call, and especially to Attorney Jonar Pueblo. So, um, one to, um, okay, I really can't. Okay, I'll just leave. Madam, give me salamat sa pagpamat. So, I'm sorry, Alika. I tried my best to, um, it's okay, Attorney. Proud, but, ayun. So, oh, no, okay, no, I, I wanna try. So, I wanna to, um, a code na lecture sa inyo. Madam, give me salamat sa pagpamat. One to ten. Thank you. Alika. Ten attorney. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you very much, attorney, for that very uh, enlightening and as well as very um, comprehensive one lecture about the Unsicel model law. I'm really sure that our participants uh, enjoyed your lecture. So uh, at this uh, point, we will be having our question and answer uh, segment, uh, the open the open forum. So to our participants, uh, the chat box is open.